Hey everyone, this is Popo here for our weekly uh, Form to Win session. Uh, I've got my dog Mocha asleep, so if you, if you hear snoring in the background, uh, that's going to be her. But before we get started, um, go to formtowin.com and download the app for your PC. Or if you're using your phone, your tablet, just go to your, your Play Store uh, and download the app. It's free. Go ahead and create an account. Uh, just you know, put in your email, put in a password, and that will enable you to get two free races a day, and as well as the last two days of results, so you can play with the app, test it out, and you know, build filters in and see if you would have found uh, some of the winners. So like always, when we start, the first thing that I like to kind of do is just give an overview um, of the app, just really quick, and we'll go into Thursday here, and what you're seeing are all the racetracks here in the U.S. that are running. Um, some have already started like Belterra and then most of the other cards start later in the day. It looks like Churchill starts at 5, Canterbury at 545 and uh, and so on. But that's for today and then we also have tomorrow's card which is the return of Belmont which is exciting. Uh, they did not run today but they're getting ready for a big holiday weekend which you know Memorial Day weekend I'm excited about and uh, as well as Gulfstream Park comes back tomorrow and I think Santa needed to yeah Santa needs to run tomorrow so you know big weekend of racing looks like it's gonna kick off uh, for the most part tomorrow we may have some weather issues to deal with rain especially in the Northeast but we'll just have to kind of play that by ear and see what the uh, weather guides bring us but let's go ahead and get started um, I will probably start looking at Churchill since they start in about an hour and we'll just fire through some of their races um, I'm gonna click on race one and I'm actually gonna take my face off here so you can see the filters the first thing that I'm gonna do uh, is see if we have this this is a maiden claiming race going as you can see uh, mile eight furlongs on the dirt and I want to see if we have a good data set to work with before we invest any time in this. Okay, we do. I mean, some of these horses have run twice, six, ten. So we do have some data to work with. So we'll go ahead and look at this race using Form to Win. So the first thing that I like to do is click the Analyze button, which is really where all the power in the app comes from. Um, you're going to see different categories here, and there's a lot of information here. So you have the the number, horse's number, the horse's name, the post position, the odds, decimal, we put them in decimals, uh, decimal wise instead of fractions, um, the best form to win time, the average form to win time, the worst, average equal base, best equal base, worst equal base, total starts, so we know we've got some starts to work with, uh, full date, not important unless, you know, it's a two year old race, um, but that can be, that can be vital information if you're looking at the, uh, at the youngsters running, um, average weight, carried, race weight carried, average weight differential, last race differential, and finally um, the weight samples. So a lot of information. I'm not going to say you're going to use it all. I certainly don't. I could try to key on a couple key things. So I recommend you go over here and you click on this tab right here and then you unhighlight the items that you don't want to see. So for me, I'm going to take off the worst form to win times. I'm going to take off the worst, or the, excuse me, the best equal base, the worst equal base, folding date, average weight, average per race weight, and then race weight samples. So now you can see I'm really only looking primarily at, at three columns, and then I like to look at the start so I know I've got some data to work with. And as you can see, when you click the top of the column here, it sorts them. So form, the form to win time, which is really the power of the app, you want to sort that from, from lowest to highest because it is a time that we assign to the horse based on distances. So you want that to be the lowest. And then your average equal base speed figure, obviously you want to sort that from highest to lowest, if that makes sense. So these are the two categories that we're really going to concentrate on. And then we are going to go ahead and create a filter and see if we can narrow down uh, this race relatively quick. So I'm going to click this filter button, distance. Okay, so 
when you're building your filters, the distances you're just going to have to play around with. For me, if it's a mile, depending on the track, that's usually two turns, except at Belmont, you know, and a couple of other tracks where it isn't one turn mile. So I will look at races between a mile or eight furlongs and a mile and a sixteenth for my distance settings for races at a mile, as long as they're two turns. Uh, and then track condition, this race is on the dirt. So we just want to look at all dirt. I click that and then I hit apply. And I'm going to sort, well, first I'll sort from average form to win time since that's the one that I like. And you can see right away it likes this horse, Let's Celebrate, who's 6-1. to one. Um, And then it likes Ambitiously Placed and Cole Shaft, who looks like he's the favorite, a relatively short favorite too. Uh, and then I will see if we have any dual qualifiers, meaning horses that rank, you know, in the top two or three and average form to win time and then also average equibase time. So I'll sort this from, from highest to lowest. And it looks like Cole Shaft was the only horse that was, um, well, ambitiously placed, was third ranked on average uh, Equibase and fit also on form to win. But it looks like the favorite who, you know, um, it's just under two to one is going to be who form to win likes. But the five is a little bit interesting in that he placed... You know, Formed one has a rank one, but that's only with one start. So what I want to do, too, is with these claiming races, another thing I like to look at is the highest last time out number. So the highest speed figure last time out. I don't know. It's a weird kind of angle that I use for some of these claiming races. I think horses that, that run that highest last out figure maybe are coming into form, and maybe they can keep that form for one more race. So we're going to go ahead and click on Comparator. Now, using this scene here, it's just giving you a quick summary of, so the one horse we have no data on, um, give, well, we do if I take the filter off. Two starts, he has one third and one off the board finish. So this is just like a color coded way to see their total starts and where they placed. Um, but I like to switch it to distance and then pack it. So what this is showing you now is the uh, one horse here ran, you know, a little over 40 days ago last time out. And he finished off the board, so he was fourth or worse. And he got assigned a 36 Equibase speed figure. So I'm looking for the highest last time out, which unfortunately is the favorite. So not a lot of value it looks like here. Form to win like the four and the five, and those are your top two choices. Now, once again, we're not factoring in pace or you know trainer angles or anything like that. We're going purely off speed and time. Um, and right away, Form to Win identifies those top two players. So I'm not going to put a lot of investment into that particular race. Let's go to race two. Six and a half claiming field of six on the dirt. Got a good data set to work with. Eight starts, five starts, six starts, three, three, five, four. So we'll just go ahead and look at this race really quick. Before I even put in a filter, Form to Win likes the six a bit. Super ready. Uh, it's a little over three and a half to one, but I'm going to go ahead and create a filter. Now six furlong sprints and six and a half. I always set my distances to look at between six and six and a half. I mean, you can extend it to seven if you want, but I try to really narrow it down. Track condition, all dirt. And by the way, if it were sloppy at Churchill or muddy, you know, you could go in here and unhighlight fast. And just look at races that were good, uh, sloppy or muddy. But I'm looking out my office window, and it's beautiful outside here in Louisville. So I'm sure it's a uh, fast track. But I believe the turf is good today because we did get some rain um, yesterday. But this is not a turf race, so we'll just concentrate on all dirt. We'll hit apply. So we're looking at races between six and six and a half furlongs. So that, that six horse, who is not the favorite, um, is still ranked number one using, I mean, only one start one sample start. Uh, fits on average Equibase. He's number one on average Equibase with one start and also um, average form to win. And then your favorite is ranked number two. So once again, not a ton of value here unless we can find a horse that ran out, ran the last highest figure. 
which is the six, ran a 77. So maybe you can beat the three a bit. I mean, second choice. So once again, not a ton of value, but that's how Form to Win has that one ranked. Um, just rifling through these, you can see once you once you develop, um, you know, your distances and create your filters, you can really, you know, power through these races relatively quickly. Uh, good data set to work with here. Seven starts, four starts, 10, five, nine, 10, four. Analyze, so we're going seven furlongs on the dirt. This is a claiming race. So seven furlongs is gonna be kind of tricky. I don't know, I mean, a six furlong horse can be a seven furlong horse, but let's really try to narrow this down and only look at races between six and a half furlongs and seven. And then this is on the dirt once again. So we'll just go down here, click all dirt, hit apply. And really I kind of narrowed it down <laughs> almost too much. Cause as you can see here, the one, two, six, seven don't have any starts between six and a half and seven furlongs. So some of these horses may be cutting back. I can tell you here directly that's the case. Uh, yeah, so we have several horses here that are cutting back, um, you know, from a mile to 16th, uh, and, you know, a mile. So there's, I don't know, I guess we could look at races between seven and eight, if that's going to give us some more data, but not necessarily a mile horse. is not necessarily going to be a seven furlong horse. And also the fact that seven furlongs at Churchill is one turn. And a one-turn horse is not always a two-turn horse, and vice versa. But if we want to look at the, if we want to expand the data set to look at between seven and eight, we'll apply it, and we'll see if that gives us any any more information. I mean, it does a little bit, and it looks like Form to Win landed on the favorite. Chewy, Chewy, good, interesting name, uh, breaking from post five, uh, who's a little bit under three to one. Um, this ancient brown though is interesting. Um, was ranked. Um, using the other filter fairly highly at 12 to 1 on the morning line. Um, let's look at him. What did he run last time out? Well, he ran a 54 equibase speed figure going six furlongs. And you can see here really quickly, the three horse does not does not win. <laughs> Red is is the uh, is how we color code wins. You know, first place. And with gosh, he's got like 10 starts. He hasn't won. So, I mean. Maybe an underneath player, but I don't even know about that. Highest last time out figure, which I like to use in these races, is once again going to be the favorite, the five. So not a ton of value. I mean, the six, cut back from a mile on a 16th, uh, has run okay going shorter. You know, five and a half furlongs in his maiden race, um, finished third. Where did he rank on form? to win. Well, they pushed him down, but probably because he was running routes. So nothing too inventive here. Um, the four with five starts. I don't know. Honestly, this would be a pass race for me because the favorite looks tough and uh, no strong opinion. Uh, from, from a price horse at least coming from underneath. So let's go ahead and go to the Churchill Four. Powering right through these. This is a eight furlong race on the dirt. Uh, starter optional claimer. We'll hit analyze. Form to win without any filters. Likes the two, Gianna's Gift at five to one. Now I'm gonna look at races between, once again, eight furlongs is two turns, so I will look at race between a mile and a mile and a sixteenth. Track condition, I'll just hit all dirt, hit apply. And there's a decent price. I mean, five to one, Gianna's Gift uh, is ranked number one on form to win. So we got two, one, four, and that four is a bit of a price on form to win. Now let's see if we have any dual qualifiers using average equibase. And the two is still there, so the two is a dual qualifier. And actually the four is too. The uh, one got pushed down a bit. So the favorite, who is the six Champagne Affair, got pushed down quite a bit. 
maybe coming out of route races and turning back to a mile. Um, but I'd be interested in the two here, Giannis Gift. Ranked uh, number one, I mean only one start at this distance between seven and eight furlongs. Let's see how she stacks up when we look at the PPs this way. So here's the two that formed a wind light. She's coming out of a seven furlong race. Finished second, see the green. Now she has one at a mile. Um, then she had a couple thirds, she had a 30 day break. They cut her back to six furlongs. Then she had another little bit of a month break. Then she fired and ran second. And now she's coming off a 28 day break. So that's where you're getting the value. Uh, the one fits here too. One at eight furlongs, placed third, going a mile. And a 16th with an 88 figure. So the horse that has the fastest last time out figure is your favorite, the six. Uh, 92. Um, but got pushed down a bit to third uh, using form to win. Now I wonder if I really drill down this stuff and just look at races at a mile at this distance. Well, the six still gets pushed down a bit. So maybe try to beat the favorite here. I'd be interested in the two. That's the square price, five to one, Gianna's gift. Let's see who the connections are. You just hit summary, and then we click on the two. We get John Court and Jerome Miller, who I'm not familiar with, but um, you know, the horses run, let's see, last 10 races, he's hit the board five times. He's got two wins. Um, so he fits on four to one, he's five to one. Be worth looking at, uh, at that horse. So that is the Churchill fourth. Powered right through there. Race five. Let's see if we have limited data set here. One start, three start, one, zero, four. So really, I'm not going to spend any time on this race. You'll have to use traditional PPs. We've got more data to work with. This eight and a half furlong starter allowance on the turf. The turf is rated good today, so we can factor that in also. We'll hit analyze. So before putting any filters, it looks like Form to Win identified the favorites, which is, you know, sometimes the way that it works out. But let's see if we can find a price and when we really try to drill down this information. So we're going eight and a half furlongs on the turf. I'll look at races between eight and eight and a half, I'm on a 16th. Now, the first time I'm gonna go through this, I'm gonna click all turf, but knowing that the turf is rated good, I'll factor that in also. So we'll just go ahead and hit all turf, hit apply, and it still likes the favorite. Uh, Camellia's Gal, uh, the number four horse at two to one is the top, let's see, is the top on average form to win. We'll see dual qualifiers. Wow, so this race looks pretty formful. So the top three horses on average Equibase and the top three horses on Form to Win um, are the exact same. You won't see that too often. Now let's see if anything changes when we click off firm, we click off hard, soft. We primarily use good and yielding here in the States. They use soft sometimes, or you'll see soft more often if you're looking at races. In, uh, in England, but we'll just, well, I'll just include it anyway. Good yielding soft. Let's see if any of these horses here change when we apply these, this filter. So no, it's still the top top three, mainly because these horses, the uh, one, two, seven, eight, nine, ten, do not have any form on, uh, on turf rated good, yielding or soft, but that looks like a formful race. I mean, we, we looked at it many different ways uh, and it's always these top three. So no, no real prices there. I'll do one more at Churchill because I do want to look at a little bit of that Penn National card tomorrow night. Uh, race seven at Churchill, we have an allowance, seven furlongs on the dirt. We'll hit analyze. Without any filters, uh, Form to Win likes the five horse a little bit. Coltonator at, uh, at six to one. But let's see if we can drill down this information. So we're going seven furlongs. I will set my filter at, let's go six and a half first. Six and a half to seven. Track condition, 
all dirt, hit apply. So right away form to win likes the one, the three, and the five. Dean Martini, I actually remember that horse. He won the, I think the Ohio Derby a couple years ago, two or three years ago, I think. I think he went off of like 17 to one that day. I only remember because I actually liked him that day and I had a nice win bet. Um, it looks like they're cutting him back now, or he's probably been cut back. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But uh, average Equibase figure is the 315. Average form to win, it's the 135. So the three horses your favorite. D Martini fits though, uh, and he's six to one odds. Now let's see where these horses were, how these horses have been running, looking at the PPs from a different angle. So Dean Martini finished third last time out going, seven furlongs with a 101. Equibase speed figure. Um, the four horse ran a 107 going and finished second. Last time out, and then where's your, where's our favorite here? Favorite is the one who ran six and a half for a long, so he's stretching out just a bit with the 100 uh, Equibase speed figure. And actually, let's see, that was his first one in a while, as you can see, red. Um, Dean Martini, Dean uh, Martini actually hasn't, hasn't won in a while, as you can see, we don't see any red in through here but he fits as well as the five let me take a look at the five real quick so the five will be stretching out to seven furlongs for the first time horse has got several seconds he's got two first let's look at the connections you get lannery and the five for Greg Foley, um, horses in the exact is six of ten. So uh, and at six to one, gotta gotta use them in some some manner, uh, as well as Dean Martini. So nothing too creative here, other than if you can beat the one with the three or the five. Uh, and for the multis, if you're playing the multis today, uh, maybe include the three or the five. But um, that's how Form to Win sees that particular race at Churchill now. Let's go to, real quick, let's look at this pen card tomorrow. Because they have a all stakes pick four at Penn National on the turf. And I love turf racing. Unfortunately, I looked at the weather report for Grantsville, Pennsylvania, which is where the track is. And it looks like they're going to get bombarded with rain. So I have no idea what they're going to do here. We're going to just handicap these races as they were on the turf. And I'll just factor in good yielding soft if we've got horses that um, that are proven over that type of surface. But anyway, let's get started. Penn National, the Limford Stakes going eight and a half furlongs, hopefully on the grass. Uh, but let's create a filter. I believe the Penn Turf course actually plays a little bit to speed too, uh, if that interests you at all. So I will hit all turf, 416 is who formed the wind lights and from an Equibase highest figure standpoint, don't ask me how to pronounce that three, Yule, Yule, um, I believe that horse runs for Maker who looks like it's a uh, you know short priced favorite only one start on uh, on either turf or tapita um, but our dual qualifiers it looks like are the four and the one so if you're trying to beat the favorite make a short price favorite those would be interesting the five horse here I know for a fact I actually looked at this race. I like the five horse a bit. Now, five horse has no no starts on turf. Um, but let me tell you, out of the buy over analyze, out of a halos image, 
uh, mayor. So, you know, I guess a tiny bit of turf pedigree, but a sharp trainer. I don't believe that's who is his trainer. John Service. Um, and they, I know they scratched in the Pin Oaks to run here. So I think the five could be dangerous first time turf. Once again, we don't have any data on that. But, uh, and I think the one honestly is interesting from a pace perspective, because when I looked at this race, it didn't look like there was any, any pace. And the fact that five starts, which is a good sample size and kind of fits on form to win, the one's a little bit intriguing. So you can try to beat the three. Um, and I didn't know what to do with the four. I mean, fits, let's see where they've been. Let's look at it. The PP's this direction. Okay. So the one horse who I liked a little bit, one last time out, going a mile on the 16th. You know, an 81 uh, Equibase speed figure. Now, see the five horse down here, he's been running on dirt. Looks like he has the last time, fastest last time out number, along with the um, the six, who fits a little bit too. The six is stretching out from a uh, from a sprint. But, uh, so the five's undefeated. And the one is just interesting. Now, let's see. We know that turf course is not going to be rated firm. So we will look at turf courses rated good, yielding soft, and we'll see if that changes the order any. Uh, so it moves. It still likes that four. Interesting. The rest of these horses don't seem to have any uh, form on turf rated good, yielding or soft. So you're just going to have to kind of, kind of make a guess. Um, there was a reason I did not like the four though, and I'm trying to figure out why. Let's see. Uh, right here. See this? A 238 days. Horse coming off a huge layoff. So, horse going to, I mean, looking at the past performances, you see a lot of green and red. Horse, horse runs competitively. The question you have to ask yourself is, is it going to be ready to fire first time out off that layoff? Your get a price if you're willing to take that gamble, 10 to 1. So, I'm not telling you, not trying to talk you off, but I'm always a little bit reserved with those horses coming off the, the, uh, the long layoff. So, trying to beat the favorite, 5 1, maybe 5 1 for me. In the uh, first at Penn National tomorrow, second race. Let's get a mile on the 16th on the turf. Hopefully, we will do a filter looking at races between eight and eight and a half. We're gonna fly through this track condition, all turf, hit apply two nine four. On average, form to win. Limited starts on the on the two. Average Equibase. It looks like the nine horse is the only dual qualifier. Uh, yeah. So the nine, my friend Frank. Let me see if I can give you any information on. That horse. Well, my notes on that horse were wanted firm only because he did have one. Well, he's had one, two, two starts on turf that was not rated firm, one on good and one on yielding, and um, did not run particularly well. Not saying he won't like it tomorrow, but uh, form to win likes him. Uh, he's a dual qualifier, and those horses that dual qualifier are always dangerous. They don't always win necessarily, but they always find a way to get involved. And a lot of times, those are those are price horses. Um, let me see if there was any other. The four is interesting. Who's ranked third on on form to win? Missing the big dog. I think I made a mark on that horse. Um, and for some reason, I made a mark on the five. Is Papa Law at 12 to 1? And I guarantee you maybe it was because he had form on turf that was rated. So once again, we're just adjusting the filter here. We're only going to look at starts on good, yielding, soft, between a mile and a mile and the 16th. We hit apply. Well, they actually got pushed down a little bit. Um, but that one Saratoga Jack is still... It's still one, uh, and he's actually the two horse um, because there is a coupled entry in here. We have a one and a one A. 
my notes on the two. Let's go to our comparator and let's see how these horses have been running, looking at all the PPs. This was my problem with the two. You don't see any red. So the horse is not one in his last 10 starts. So I typically <laughs> avoid those horses. Now watch them go off and win <laughs> tomorrow because I'm not going to use them. Um, but I'm going to be interested in the four, the nine a bit because he's a dual qualifier. I don't know if I'm going to use him on the multis, but maybe underneath. And I, I do like that five uh, a little bit. So that's race two tomorrow. Race three at Penn National. This is a mile. This is the Penn Oaks. Uh, got a field of seven if they all enter, and let's hope this stays on the turf without any filters. Form to win likes Amafi Princess for Maker. Uh, Honey Pants is second, and I believe that horse runs for Christopher Clement. So. At a mile, this is where you're going to have to get, I mean, I guess I'll look at the races between a mile and a mile and a sixteenth. Let's see what the data set looks like, though. Track condition. I'll just hit all turf first, and then we'll go back and apply it for for turf ready to good yielding or, or soft. So on form to win, it's 417. Average equal base is 417. We don't have any, um, the two. Oh, okay, so the two's going to scratch because the two is running in the um, in the first stakes of the day. So you can take the two out. The three looks like three has no form on turf, but does have form on uh, on the artificial surface. And then the six has turf form, but the six is stretching out uh, to a mile. So the six has been running in sprint races i know maker thinks she can get a mile and you know she may get it and especially if uh there i don't think there's a ton of speed in this race honestly now honey pants the four is the favorite fits on form to win um proven off lasix so this is a uh horse is here tomorrow and this and this particular race cannot run on lasix so she's proven off lasix she's run well I mean, my problem with this horse, and she may win, but my problem is she's one for six for uh, for Christopher Clement. So not a cinch, but this isn't the toughest field. Um, I'd be interested in the seven from a price perspective, honestly. Marble Road, uh, who was just put into, uh, looks like it was previously trained by uh, Brendan Walsh, put into Kent Sweezy's barn. Um, has some good breeding by the Gurkha out of the Stormcat Mayor. Just really hasn't done much. One for five uh, coming out of a uh, allowance non winners of one at Churchill. Didn't really do much, but they turn around. And that was on May 8th, and they turn around and come back here on relatively short rest. So, I don't know. Kind of interesting. If trying to beat the, uh, the favorites, um, you know, if the six or the four, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll use the seven. And then finally, we get to the last race, and this will be the last race that we talk about today. This is the 10 mile, grade two. Graded means no LASIK, so factor that in how you want. Um, without any filters. Oh, and a seven, go ahead and take a seven out. If you're gonna look at this race, the seven for West of Ward Outdoor is gonna run at Belmont. It's not gonna uh, ship to, uh, to Penn. So I would uh, scratch that one. It likes, it, ironically, it likes the six a little bit, who's a price, without any filters. But let's really try to drill down some information here. So let's look at distances between eight and eight and a half. Once again, you can look at seven to seven, or excuse me, seven to eight. But I'm really trying to find two turns, which is eight, eight and a half, track condition, all turf. Okay, the favorite, NX, out of door. And Chess's Dream are the top three on average form to win. Average Equibase, Original moves up a little. 
Uh, you know, out of doors out, so you can scratch that horse. So nothing too um, too interesting here from a price perspective. The thing with the three, read into this what you want. Um, Annex, who you know broke his bait the first time out at Gulfstream, came right back in the um, in the Palm Beach Stakes, won again by head, beat Chess's dream in that race. He's also in this race. Came back at the Cutler Bay at Gulfstream Park, won again by a neck. Um, then showed up in the Grade Two American Turf at Churchill, going this distance. And I really couldn't find any excuse for the horse. I went back and watched the replay. I'm not sure what happened there. So now Bill Mott puts blinkers on, which, you know, blinkers can sharpen a horse because this horse does like to come out of it. So maybe he's trying to put this horse into the race a little bit more. But Bill Mott blinkers first time out is 5%. So not saying that, you know, it's not going to sharpen the horse, but it's not an angle that, uh, you know, first, a lot of times trainers put on blinkers and you'll see a ton of improvement with their horses. Maybe Mott's just trying to put some more speed into this horse, but, you know, 5% with a sample size of... Uh, 75 horses, first time blinkers. Um, not a great, not a great statistic. Not saying he can't win, but that's a short price on a horse. Not saying to toss him, uh, because really, like, who are your other options? I mean, I am interested in Chess's dream for Maker. Uh, you know, went. He was also in that American Turf. Actually, finished in front of Annex in that race, and you're getting a little more value uh, at three to one. And was going, uh, looks like five wide, flattened a bit. Proven off Lasix. Well, I think actually most of these are because Annex broke his maiden on Lasix and he came back and won the Palm Beach in the color without it. So off Lasix won't be an issue for either of these two horses. Uh, so nothing too creative there. I don't know. I mean, if you're playing the multis, I can't. I, you're, I would say you'd have to use one. I wouldn't use both favorites. You know, take a stand somewhere and just play a bigger ticket, bigger increment, play the pick four for a couple bucks. Because um, it could chalk out. And I wouldn't want you to chalk out and play two favorites. Just, you know, try to single one if you like one more than the other. The only other horse of interest I will mention, so I'll probably lean more a little bit on Chess's Dream than NX. I do like the two original. And I think he has form over good yielding soft. Let's see. We hit apply. He does only once. He's run once on good yielding. But original, I think, has a pace advantage in this race. Um, the six could show some speed, but the six is stretching out from six furlongs. So I'm not sure if he's going to be there at the end. Uh, so I think... The two original for John Terranova is interesting at a price, and you get John Velasquez in the saddle. So I'm not going to use both favorites between Annex and Chess's Dream. I'm only going to use one, and I'll probably use Chess's Dream, and then I'll use original if I decide to play the uh, the multis. So that's how form to win. Saw the uh, that all stakes pick four. Once again, I hope that they stay on the turf because um, it is a you know good way to get the holiday weekend started uh, with that pick four. But once again, thank you for your time today. Uh, go to formtowin.com. If you're using a PC and download it, it's free. Download it on your phone. Uh, you can text me if you have my cell. DM me on Twitter if you have any questions about filters or distances. I'll do my best to answer those. If I don't have all the answers, I'll talk to the boys in Australia. Uh, with They're doing some updates now. So if you have any recommendations or anything that you want to see built into the app, uh, we'll try to get those done for you with our next release. You know, we're going to put in right now. Here, I'll show you real quick. Uh, let's see. Let's go to a live race. Uh, but we should, no, we won't have odds on. Churchill. Let's go. Well, that's a quarter horse race. You can look at quarter horse races using form to win. Um, I was going to show you sim bets, but it's hard to do it without odds. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the sim bet option is also built into the app. You put in how much you want to spend. So let's, you know, the default was the, was 100, but I'll just put 
50. And let's say you were playing Churchill today. Now these are the morning line odds. These aren't the, the current odds. Um, I won't go into the reasons why now, but they don't give us their data, data fee for odds. Um, if you were trying to play, well, we found these two favorites. But anyway, what I was trying to show you is using this up here, it's telling if you were to take your $50 and you were to dutch these two horses, dutch to win, I would never dutch two favorites, but so say you didn't, say you didn't like the, that horse, but you liked, uh, let's celebrate the five. Dutching enables you to take that $50, you'll put $35 on the three horse for a payout of $87.50, and you'd put $15 on the six horse for a payout of 90. So with dutching, what you're trying to do is play multiple horses and try to guarantee a profit and it shows you what your profit would be. Um, it's a powerful tool, especially on exact is. Um, but anyway, with the reason I'm telling you that, we do have that built into Amwager. So if you don't have an Amwager account, go there and create an account because we, we have uh, the dutching tool available on exact is, doubles, the win bet, um, so it's, a good, it's just a, a nice feature to have. But the whole reason I'm telling you this is some of that stuff is going to be built into the next release of Form to Win. So we have some uh, some exciting things coming. Uh, like I said, if you have any ideas about improvements, we'll have we'll probably have some different you know bet types instead of just Win Bet. But this is just to get started because you know for people that are new to the game, the Win Bet's obviously the easiest bet to do. Um, I wouldn't. A lot of people say bet to show, but if you're trying to maximize your winnings when you're right. You want to bet to win. Um, but those, those things are coming here in the future. So appreciate your time today. Everybody have a safe holiday weekend. If you're drinking, for God's sakes, please do not drive. Um, just have a good time, but be safe. Anyway, I'll see you next Thursday, probably. Um, we'll be able to talk about some of the Belmont stuff. Big week coming next week. Um, either build your bankroll for, for Belmont next week or, uh, you know, Hold the wall in it a little bit and save some for next week. Because next week's going to be a big week of bracing. But anyway, appreciate your time. I'll see you next time. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out.